recognised the utility of the normal distribution in statistics <coughs> because it models the distribution of variation that arises from um, a causal or random processes. This ability is also very useful for modeling actual physical environmental processes. And this is because many environmental processes are controlled by multiple interacting variables. Um, individually these variables might not be um, seen as being a causal. However, because of so many of them and they interact with each other, the net result is something that's unpredictable and a causal. Um, therefore, overall, their net effect of these interacting processes is random. Um, the example that we've developed is the idea of diffusion, um, which is the movement of particles due to random collisions with other surrounding particles ultimately driven by heat. Um, so the process of diffusion is something that controls the distribution of materials in the environment and things we're particularly interested in are the distribution of contaminants and often their particles in, in fluids whether they're in air or in water. So the actual process of diffusion is described by Fick's law. Um, the rate of diffusion, that's the diffusive flux, is proportional to the concentration gradient. And this exercise is one in which you're going to show that the net result of the process of diffusion is to produce a distribution that corresponds to the normal distribution. And really it's showing the power of a, a little bit of mathematical understanding. Uh, we've used it for statistics which has allowed us to make measurements meaningful which is a very powerful thing to do. Um, but also we can use it for modelling and therefore predicting uh, the distribution of contaminants for example in the environment. So practically what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a normal distribution. It's drawn up here. This data is plotted from these columns here where we've got the equation for a normal distribution. We've got the Gaussian equation and the parameters and the mean and the standard deviation. It's the unit normal distribution so the area under the curve equals 1 um, and we've split it into a hundred classes we've called them height but really just as well um, call them distance really in this case we would imagine that we've got distance in the x-axis and the frequency we could take as being the frequency of particles being there or solutes being there so in other words we could call them concentration we could rename them if we want. Um, distance and concentration. If you change the standard deviation from point 1 to point 2, you see the distribution flattens out. What we're going to do though is to, instead of changing the standard deviation, we're going to let the process of diffusion as defined by Fick's law operate on this distribution. So you can imagine this is a concentration across a lake of a certain contaminant and we're going to see how it changes over time. So Fick's law, which defines the diffusive flux, will write an equation in here that characterizes that flux and then at the next time 
we'll be able to work out what the new concentration is. Now we can change these. If we want. Distance. Concentration. Concentration. And then having worked it out for time t1, we can work the flux out again and work out the concentration at time t2, and then do it again and do it again. We know that in reality, these concentrations are changing continuously. Time does not move in steps. It's continuously changing. But what we're doing is breaking down time into steps. Similarly, this distance We've broken it down into a hundred steps, but actually we know that distance is continuous variable as well. So in both the distance dimension and the time dimension, we've discretized those variables, and that means that we're actually going to be using difference equations rather than differential equations, which is typical of environmental modeling, because the differential equations and the integral calculus that's required is generates equations that we can't solve so the way that they are solved is by using these numerical methods and the heart of the numerical method is to break down the dimensions that you're working in into discontinuous variables we'll cover that again in another uh, another project but we can see the way this is going to work. In order for us to calculate the flux, um, we'll look at the concentration gradient between two points, and the gradient will be the difference in concentration between the two points divided out by the distance over which it operates. And that's straightforward arithmetic, whereas, of course, if we were trying to work out the gradient uh, in a system that was continuous, then we'd be trying to work out the gradient of a curve, which means using differential calculus. But here, the difference then is the difference between this concentration and this concentration. Uh, that is proportional to the flux, which is the movement of mo the movement of material. Uh, away from that point. It's equal to the concentration gradient multiplied by a constant of proportionality. In this case it's called the diffusion coefficient and we have a value for that here which is as we multiply it by the diffusion coefficient. The diffusion coefficient is going to be applied to all of these calculations that we do so we need to make that an absolute reference, so it's an absolute reference both to its cell number and to its column, uh, its column letter. So we can enter that, and that gives us the flux. That's the movement of material by diffusion. And we can copy that down. The next thing then we've got a starting concentration, we've got a flux, so that's a rate of movement of material that's going to occur over the first time step, so it's occurring for a certain amount of time, so the flux occurs for a certain amount of time, and then we can calculate what the new concentration will be subsequent to that flux occurring. And again, we can just use arithmetic for this because we've broken down the uh, problem domain into discrete pieces so we can use these difference equations and the new concentration is going to be equal to the original concentration minus the flux that's the material that's left but including the flux that's moved into this part of the system which is what's next to it. That's the flux from the cells on the other side, the flux from the cells on the other side, 
moves into the cells that we've just done the calculation for. So overall, we end up with the new concentration. And again, we can copy that down. And there we go. It's plotted the line up. So this was our starting concentration distribution. And then after the first time step, when diffusion's been active, the concentration, the mean concentration, or the concentration at the middle of the lake has dropped as diffusion has taken place. We can now carry out the same procedure to work out the concentration at time 2, 3, 4 and 5. And the easiest way of doing that is just to copy. In fact, we can just copy them all the way across. And then we can copy those down as well. And then that will draw in the new concentration distributions for times T2, T3, T4 and T5. We can see that it, the distribution continues to look like a normal distribution. So we start with a normal distribution, we let diffusion operate on it, and that was diffusion defined by fixed law and implemented as a numerical model using difference equations and um, we've ended up with something that looks like a normal distribution. And the last thing to do is just to check whether we, it really is a normal distribution and we'll do that by seeing if we can produce the same effect as diffusion which is what's gone on here. This has changed to, from uh, the original distribution to the new one as a result of diffusion. We can see if we can produce that effect just by changing the standard deviation of the original concentration distribution. If we change that to 0.13, that will spread the distribution out and see the blue one is now almost the same as the yellow one. Um, it's slightly more spread out than the yellow one. If we change to 0.126, then they're overlapping. And we can do the same thing if we want to try and make the blue line overlap with the distribution from um, T2. We can increase that a bit further, 0.1. Five. It's a bit too much. Not point one four five. Not point one four seven. Okay, and you can do that yourselves too. Within three decimal places you can try and get these things to match up but it does show that the the effect of diffusion is modeled very well by the normal distribution and the implementation of diffusion as characterized by fixed law results in a distribution that is modeled by the normal distribution we have a powerful tool then for investigating um, environmental processes and the movement of contaminants.